Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. So we want to start with the easy stuff here and uh, then we can move to the harder stuff. So the easy stuff is on this tab, course landing page and course messages. These two are easy. Then we can go to intended learners and then finally curriculum. But before we do all that, I want the save button to show that uh, we have something to save. So right now it's active, which means we can always click save to save. And I want once we click save to save, it goes disabled. The same thing that's happening with Udemy here. So if I type something, this button becomes active. So we need a similar thingy here. So let's fix that real quickly. And then we can add some inputs over here. So to start with, we know that when we reload the page for the first time, there's no need for the save button to work because we haven't edited anything yet. So uh, with that in mind, it means we can go to the button. Where is it? It's uh, right here. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, what's that? Okay, so the edit starts here and these are the buttons, save and this one. Okay. So maybe I can create a class so that we can just add a class list and that's always usually better, right? So save button, I'll just say disabled. Like this, okay. So let's see if there's a class already. Oh, looky there. How nice, there's a class already by Bootstrap with disabled. I actually did not know this. Okay, so what we would do is um, we want to enable it when things are dirty, right? So what I'll do is, hmm, let's name this button, right? Let's give it a class. So we're going to put JS at the beginning so that we know this class is specifically for JavaScript stuff. And I'll just say save button button is double t so let's put that there so js save button that's the name of this button here and so we will use this in javascript to find this button quickly so i'm going to go down here so we'll look for all the places where we are setting the dirty uh, variable to true or false wherever we are changing this variable we also need to change uh, what the save button looks like. Okay. Now to make things easier, it's always a good idea to create functions for all these kind of activities rather than just having to type uh, a lot of code at the same time. So what we'll do is we're going to create a function and say function um, disable, or you can use enable but let's just use disable save underscore button like this. This way we know exactly what it's doing. And then in here, we're going to add a variable. Um, I don't know what we can call it. You can really call it anything. Um, let's call it status, right? But let's put false as a default value. So status is going to be used to enable or disable the button. If status is true, then let's enable it. If it's false, let's disable it. So I'm just going to put an if statement and just say if status. So if status and uh, let's uh, do document dot query selector. This is how we find items. It's a class name, let's paste like this okay so document dot query selector so we've selected the item here we we'll just say dot um, class list because we just want to get that disabled class and oh sorry what am i doing here Okay, so the class list, we want, if status is true, we want to enable it. So we want to remove the disabled class. So we'll say dot remove. So we remove this class from the list, which means now the button has been enabled. So let's put an else statement here. 
and then do the very opposite and add the disabled like that. Okay, so this reduces the amount of code we need to write every time. We can just um, copy this right there when we want to disable it. So here, dirty is equal to false, right? So nothing dirty here. Let's disable our save button. So I'm just going to say disable and here I'll put true or false. Here, true because I want it disabled. So disable it, yes. So dirty is false, which means everything is clean. So no need for the save button. Let me copy this. But here, uh, where we are saying we want to maintain things, right? Uh, hmm. What to do? Anyway, we can simplify things by saying uh, every time we show a new tab, the, the button should be disabled, right? So when is it enabled then? Uh, when something changes, right? Okay, so something changed, disabled is equal to false. So, okay, so whenever something has changed, let's enable the button. Let's disable it. Let's see here, set tab. Um, Hmm. Let's see here, show tab dirty. Okay, I wanted to add this inside the show tab uh, function, but I think that wouldn't work very well because there's sometimes we want to show a tab, but this is still dirty, right? Hmm. Okay, what to do here? Okay, so tab.show, um, here, if I cancel, tab.show was working already. Okay, so let me remove it from here. Let's try this. Uh, if it doesn't work, we'll do something else. So paste here. But I'll put an if statement and say if dirty. Hmm, what am I trying to do here? Uh, if dirty, we do that. Let's put an else statement and paste again. So dirty, let's disable, put false. <sighs> am I missing something here? Wait a second. Disable, if true, we remove the disabled, so we're enabling if it's true. If false, we are disabling. Okay, let me keep that in mind. This get, it gets confusing sometimes. So something changed, we want to enable, so we'll put true here. Sorry about that, I'm confused. Uh, so true is enabling, false is disabling. So here, when something changes, we enable the button. And then when we, whenever we show a new tab, we check if dirty is true. If there's something dirty there, then we enable the button. Otherwise we disable it. Okay, let's see if our magic is working now. So let's refresh our page. The button is disabled. If I type here, it's enabled now. So that's cool. Let's try and go to a different place. And then let's say we cancel, we want to go back there. So it should still be enabled, which it is, that's nice. But let me try and go elsewhere and just say, uh, okay, I still want to go elsewhere. Uh, dirty is still true, right? So why didn't this, I think because this happens after the fact, hmm. Okay, so this is probably not the place to add this. So I'm going to cut that. This is going to be tough because I... Um... Hmm. Not sure here what to do. Usually when we switch tabs, let me undo this. Usually when we switch tabs, we start afresh. So we disable it. So I'm just going to remove this and put that by default. 
you know, coding can be a little confusing sometimes. So you just have to follow the logical steps one by one and see what am I doing here. But then when we are here, if uh, this right here means I have refused to continue. So I want to keep my dirty status here. So right when we show the tab, because every time we say show tab, it's going to first disable the button. So afterwards, we can tell it to enable the button again, since dirty is set to true here. So let me put true over there. Okay, so hopefully that's all I need to do. This is why I created a function like this, because if I were to put this code, otherwise I would need to put all this code over and over in here. Uh, with this uh, or just this. So it would increase the amount of code, but putting functions like this simplifies things because I'm just calling the function. And if I need to change something about how I'm disabling or enabling, I just need to edit the function and all these instances are corrected. All right, so let's see if it's working this time. I'll do this, active, good. Let's go here and let's say, okay, I want to continue this doesn't work it's supposed to disable this guy okay let's get back let's go to another page let me do this try to move and I say uh, cancel it stays as it should which is nice if I try to go again here your changes are not saved okay just go it's supposed to disable so which means after all, I will still need this guy over here for some reason. Anyway, let's just add it. The code doesn't seem very efficient, but it will still work. Uh, let's say, okay, and it's now disabled. So rightly so, until I edit something and try to go to the next page and say, it will just go, and there we go. Let me edit again, try to go here and let me cancel. Uh, it's back here, which is nice. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so things are working as intended. All right, so, so much struggle just to get that button right, huh? But we have it now, so this is good. Okay, very nice. Okay, now we should be able to save. So let's add some real inputs in the next video. Let's start with uh, this page and then go to this one. Let's see here. Um, uh, course landing page, save changes. No, let's move on. And it's loading, 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 loading. Yes. So the reason why it does this is uh, on Udemy, it actually reloads every time we go to another page, but I don't want, I don't want us to go that deep into uh, creating using Ajax everywhere because it makes things very complex. So I don't want to complicate things too, too much. So on our situation here, on our page, we don't reload every time we shift to a new tab. With Udemy, it reloads the page entirely, not the whole page, but just that section. We can do that, but it will become very complex. So we will leave it the way it is right now. All the inputs are active at the same time. It's just that we are seeing the particular ones that we want as a section at a time, but everything is loaded at once. Okay, so this is what we are going to add in the next video. Mm -hmm. Course image, promotional video, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this will be probably the easiest stuff compared to this tab right here and also course messages. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.